How's everyone doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. I'm Larry Taylor, the managing partner for the Cochran firm here in Texas. I'm here with my clients, the Bushes. And as you guys all know, we filed a lawsuit last Friday. And the HMA security company has one of the defendants. And so I know you guys have quite a few questions, and I'll let you guys uh, begin with questions. When were you hired? Uh, we, were, we were hired roughly, I think, 48 hours after uh, the incident. No, I mean, when were your clients hired to work as uh, security? That's what I mean. I'm okay. sorry. The morning of. The morning of? And how did you come across them? Uh, social media. Okay. Social great. media was kind of like a social media post asking for anybody to show up. So describe that to me. Is on Instagram or what? It was like an Instagram post asking for anybody to show up for security. I got my security license, so I had interest in it, thinking I can, you know, get in pretty easily. But I didn't even need the credential of a security license. Okay, so because they didn't ask just a little bit. I didn't need I didn't need it because they didn't ask for it. But um, it was pretty much a sh anybody show up and anybody can work. Okay, so, as far as you know, people didn't have to have some type of prerequisite no. background or anything like that. Long. No, you didn't even need. Um, citizenship basically. So what did they tell you your duties were? For the most part they told us where to stand, you know, um, not to let people run in, which we tried not to. Uh, and be safe. Don't put our hands on anybody. So it's more than sufficiently trained? Um I mean I, I guess with a little more instructions it could have been easily executed but as far as the training, there was no training offered, you know, for the particular concert of Asher World. And when you saw what was happening, when you saw those horrific events unfold, what you know, did you it, think? It started off, you know, it started off as the, uh, you know, the as the fans trying to, you know, in a rush to get in, you know, and finished with the fans being ex the exhaustion showing, you know, of how much it took, you know, to get to that point. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty at all. It wasn't pretty at all. Can you talk about what you witnessed, specifically what you witnessed? I'm sure it was people needing help, uh, people in, in pain, injured. It was, it was, a, it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of distress. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people were so into the concert, they didn't want to be helped for the most part. I was trying, even before the concert started, uh, I helped a lot of people. It was already bad before the, concert started uh, so for the most part yeah I can say the people it showed you know the fans it was, they was already out of whack before the concert started where were you placed uh, throughout the venue throughout the day um... well for the for the beginning we were at the entrance of the uh, ticketing you know where they was allowing the fans to come in um, towards like maybe like 7 30 ish when the before the concert before travis scott himself started performing they moved us to the concert area where we were escorting artists back and forth celebrities back and forth and it wasn't so much of crowd control then it was just making sure that they don't get touched you know um but during that it's you know you had no other choice but to help people they were begging for help who were you escorting in and out um you know, most of the uh, artists that performed that day, you know, that night. Sizzle? Was it Sizzle? It was a few people, like through the crowd, through the Everybody. Travis Scout. So when they uh, when they gave you the offer for employment, did they contract you for the whole weekend, or was it just for the day? Well, the agreement was the whole weekend, you know, so I took off from my day-to-day -day job to be there. You know, my boss granted me the days off to be there. Um, the second day, we wasn't even notified that it was canceled until we got here and seen the big sign saying Astro World's canceled. You know, we were still ready to work, even though, you know, we went through. See, by the night it was over with, I had my shoes off. My shoes were gone, too, you know, so it was a lot of. And did they pay you for the whole weekend or they pay you hourly? And how much did you Well, they paid pay? us. Well, we don't really know what they paid us, honestly, because 
What did they offer you? What did they tell you? We were, they didn't tell us anything. We heard from the other people working with us that what you know what they were supposed to pay us. That's the only way you know. That's oh, the only really? thing. We, that's one of the things that are still in dispute yeah. huh. right now. Okay. So they were initially told that they were going to be paid thirty dollars an hour, uh -huh. uh, and then it went from thirty dollars an hour to not being paid at all. Uh, to eventually just mysteriously uh, being paid a little of something on their cash app. And so as we go forward, exactly, as we go forward with this litigation, that's one of the things that we'll also be looking into as as well. You know, how were these subcontractors uh, paying these individuals who were risking their lives uh, to help out during this event? So they didn't have to fill out W-2s or any of that stuff? Like that's, that's one of the things that is disturbing, right? These gentlemen show up, they were told to wear all black. They did exactly what they were told to do. They signed in, no ID, nothing required. They signed in on a form uh, and went to work. And as you can see, uh, ended up getting injured. Um, as we were walking in, they were recognizing some of the people that they were actually trying to help during this event. And so it's been traumatic for them and as well as other workers at this particular point. And what's the name of the company again? AJ Molina. We worked over 16 hours that I can like count them, you know, kind of remember exactly because I remember we showed up. Well, that we showed up like 5:30 that morning. We didn't really get in touch with anyone until about 7:30 because we were here for about two hours, look trying to locate the company and uh, you know, like who was in charge. Um, so we, I could say from like 5:30 that morning to like 1 a.m. the next day, you know, that night. What did you think about the whole process? Did you think this is, this is uh, a red flag or red flag after red flag? I really don't. I couldn't think about the red flags because it was so much. It was so overwhelming of, you know, the volume of things that was going on. Um, I was just trying to be professional as I can. Um, I only have my level two. I, I mean, I have interest in having my level four, which is like bodyguard security, which in particular, you know, you need extra training for that. And I say you got to have a certain type of you know mentality and I was trying to keep that mentality of not getting starstruck around the celebrities and not you know trying to enjoy the concert so much and try to actually pay attention to the fans and do the you know the job of helping them and it was the it was so many people it got, it got to a point where where you know so the fans couldn't you know really I didn't know who to you know a lot of, you know pay attention to for help you know it was too how many people do you think uh, this company hired here to work work uh, security? Did you find any colleagues? It was a, uh, I did not, nobody I noticed from Houston, but it was a, uh, it was a big team of us. It was a big team on the other companies. Um, like I said, the plan was just, it wasn't executed the right way. Do you have any idea how many total number? We, we don't at this point. From what we understand, there were a group of individuals who were actually brought in and then there were those who were hired locally but it seemed to be no communication between the different entities or the different individuals um, both samuel and jackson at one point were separated and samuel didn't even know uh jackson didn't know that samuel ended up breaking his hand until later on that night when they finally got back together and at the same time trying to protect others uh, listening to some of the stories that they've told about how they tried to attempt to help people and those they were able to help and at the same time trying to protect each other um, samuel was trampled twice uh, where people just stepped on his hand and broke his hand and so you know between these two individuals who worked and other individuals that worked there's a lot of questions to be answered samuel why don't you tell us your experience um, we uh, my nephew had, had got the uh, text message or whatnot, and he told me about it. I was excited, and I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of the, you know, get actually see the uh, celebrities and work the event. So he, he sent me the the, email, uh, the text message. I responded. They told us they told us to uh, show up in all black, and that's what we did. We showed up in all black, ready to work, We're not knowing that the event was going to turn out like it did. Do you have a security background? I have a, I have a security background. I worked uh, clubs and uh, security uh, concerts and stuff like that before back at home. So what, when when things got bad, tell me what happened. Well, um, we when things got bad, 
the, that's when the crowds and stuff started to stampede and barricade and tear stuff and just do whatever they had to do to get in. And uh, it was just it was just overwhelming. I, I was trying to help out as much as I could, and I wound up getting hurt. And uh, they were they were speaking about shutting it down, but they continued on. And when I hurt my hand, the, they summoned to medical, and I was going to continue work as long as everybody else was was working. And uh, I wind up hurting my hand and getting trampled for the second time. And uh, that's when they moved us around a little bit more. And things just started to get more and more out of hand, out of control. Did they give you any uh, advice on what maybe you should do if things got bad? No, they didn't. They just was, they just, the uh, only instructions I remember them saying was just stay safe and uh, don't put your hands on no one. Uh, at, um, the time at the event when they actually brought us to the uh, to the stage, the performance. Sir, can you describe when you tried to help help people or pull them out? You said that you couldn't. You yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, there was there was a little a little lady. She was a petite lady, maybe not even five foot, 120, maybe 30 pounds, and uh, she was screaming and begging and crying for help, saying that she couldn't breathe and that her friend that her friend was may, may have been uh, down on the ground or something. And, uh, my hand was hurting all the time, and I just I just reached my shoulder to her and asked her to grab around me so I could try to lift her up and slide her out. But as much as I tried, I could not even get her. So I had to I had to call for more help to get the young lady out of there, and I felt bad because I couldn't, yes, I couldn't, I couldn't. They, they they had some people come, but it just wasn't enough. How did that make you feel? It made me feel real bad. It made me feel less than a man that I couldn't help someone that was in need of help. And then later on, knowing that a lot of people had died. We had helped out probably like 60. Just in my section alone before I found my uncle, I, helped, I put out probably like 40 to 60 people, I, the section I was in, before Richard Side even hit the stage. It was even before the concert started. I thought I pulled those 60 people out. My my body was sore. I was I was literally sore because I had helped out guys that was bigger than me. I found my uncle and I told him I was like I was like bro I can't keep I gotta get away from him over there. I can't keep in that. It was like it was like it was because I was hurting so much. But it was like man I keep begging the fans like I'm like can I please help you out? Can I please help you out? And they didn't want to be helped. They wanted to see Travis. Larry, you talked about how this is obviously emotional and traumatizing for the people that also a huge part of the lawsuit and the damages that they now have to live with. It, it, and it is, and anyone who has ever talked to anyone who has suffered through some kind of traumatic incident, this has probably been one of the worst ones I've actually heard people who were there. Uh, for people who are just everyday individuals like many of us, to, to see dead faces, to see people and distraught trying to help others and then like they said trying to help and not being able to help is it was hurt and just listening to their stories uh time and time again for every client that is called in it it's it's troublesome because no one should have to to see something like that and also uh, travis scott um not the first time that you know his concerts have had issues with. so that is something that you will also be looking into that is something that we we're all looking into I'm, I'm pretty sure many of you guys have seen the netflix uh movie or documentary and as early as 2000 what 18 17 there were fans breaking through barricades and coming through and so you have to ask yourself and ask the security companies why didn't you why weren't you prepared you had basically three years to be prepared and you knew the type of fans that would be coming. Um, you know, things like zigzag. Why, or why weren't the fans told to go into a zigzag function so that they couldn't just all bum rush and force down gates and overpower security? And so in, at the same time, cause senseless deaths of these individuals behind us. So those are all things that we'll be taking a look at. How were you communicating with the other security and, and your superiors? Half the time, we couldn't even find them. So it was ever whoever was close to you, was, you know, communicate with them. Uh, we were actually backing up another security team out of Dallas. Uh, I think it was Dallas, Texas. Um, 
and they was like uh, some of the elderly and college students, so they really wasn't some of the strongest people to help, you know, the fans out of the barric behind from behind the barricades. So for the most part, I had to be right there where I was, you know. And I, I couldn't. Besides my uncle, once I located him, I didn't know where I didn't know where nobody else was. So they didn't give you all walkie-talkies or anything? No walkie-talkies. No walkie-talkies. Didn't that seem weird to you? It all seemed weird. I like, I, I was just trying to keep my professionalism and take, you know, and do the job. Do you feel like the team security teams were set up for failure ultimately? Do you feel as though they were, you guys were just thrown? In my conclusion, yes, I do. I do. I feel like we was, feel like we was just thrown out there for, like, you know, for whatever to happen. I feel like it was planned to go that way, you know, through. For us not to be paid and handled, you know, professional as we worked, yeah, I do feel like that. Do you have a screenshot of the listing that got you this job? Um, we, 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 at this point, we do you contact our office and anything that we can provide to you um, at this time, we'll provide. Okay, can we get, you think we can get that for this evening? Give me, contact Julie, uh, Ryan and we'll go from there. But I don't want to do too much prior to uh, the early part of this litigation. And you said that there was some amount that was given to you over the cash app. When did that amount? When did that come in? And how much was it compared to what you probably were owed? Um, I can't even remember when we. I, I didn't even want to, you know, touch it. Um, so I, I can't even remember when. I think it was a few days ago. Yeah, it was. It was most likely. I think it was. It was last Friday, and it was probably one fourth of what they they should have received. Last Friday, as in just a couple of days. Yes. Okay. Yes. Last last Friday, and and any right around one fourth of what they should have received. Well, what is typical protocol when hiring? I guess freelance security like that. Is, is that normal? Is that a normal process? First security job I ever had uh, to work just at a, a bank. Um, I went about uh, fingerprint. I had to go and take the fingerprint process, uh, the whole background check. Uh, I even had to take like uh, the level two security test and I had to pass because if you did not pass, you did not work. And it was a little more in intense than this was way, way more intense. And, and I'll answer that question with a simple you would think it would take more than just signing your name. At least an ID, uh, at least the day before, coming through, walking through, seeing what you needed to do. So everyone knew their assignment, everyone knew each other. None of those things were, were done. It was as simple as you and I meeting up right now and walking on the other side of this gate and we're supposed to secure the park. Secure what? Secure where? Secure who? were provided to these gentlemen and I, it seems as if they just wanted bodies more so than to actually be able to secure. And as far as you know they didn't do any background checks on anybody who was working security? As my clients have told us they just showed up and signed their name. Now I don't know for every security company but as far as we know right now people just showed up in the uniforms or dressed the way that they were asked to and were put to work. Both your names and ages. I'm Jackson Bush, J C K S O N B U S H, both spelled traditionally. I'm 25 years old. My name is Samuel Bush, S A M U E L B U S H. I'm 46 years of age. Thank you very much. I'm Larry Taylor, I'm 48. L A R R Y. T A R R Y. Thank you guys. Give, give, give Ryan a buzz, and, and any of you guys who have ever worked with, with me before, you understand we'll get you what you need, but I want to make sure that we keep the integrity of this case and making sure that we protect our, our client. So, but I'm very forthcoming in making sure that you guys are, are taken care of. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a pleasure. You too.